So I'm Danny Hang. I'm one of the medical oncologists at the Tom Baker Cancer Center. And it's so nice to see very familiar faces here, patients, families, uh, and it's so wonderful that the KCC is able to get us all together because I think these sort of forums are extremely important in everyone's patient care. So I've been tasked with talking about the future of metastatic kidney cancer and how to get there through clinical trials, so I'll talk about that. So what I plan on doing is going through some of the clinical trials that we have currently at the Tom Baker and in Canada and around the world, actually. Um, and I'll break it off into patients with non-metastatic disease, so uh, meaning that their, their kidney cancer is just in the kidney and it hasn't spread anywhere else. And also in patients with non-localized uh, non metastatic disease, which means that it's not just in the kidney anymore, it's spread somewhere else to the lungs, liver, brain, or, or whatever. And so we'll, we'll talk about those different clinical trials available to you. I'll also talk a bit about the Global RCC uh, Database Consortium, which is a very an exciting initiative, and also the Canadian Kidney Cancer Information System, which all of you could be a part of. So why research? Why is research important? As Dr. Ruther talked about, research is the only way that we can improve treatment for patients today and for tomorrow. And without research, we wouldn't have this treatment revolution that we've experienced over the past five years. So. Ten years ago, there was immunotherapy with response rates of 15%, and that was about it. And we didn't have very good news to tell patients with metastatic kidney cancer. Now, we have exciting new drugs. We have over seven drugs that we can use now, um, and uh, more drugs coming down the pipeline. And so without valuable clinical trials, such as the ones that have been done in the past, uh, we wouldn't have the drugs that we have today. So I'm going to talk about the clinical trials available currently, and um, uh, this clinical trial is for adjuvant therapy. So you'll hear, you'll hear oncologists talk about adjuvant therapy, and what that means is for people that um, have kidney cancer only in their kidneys, okay, hasn't spread anywhere else, and the treatment for that is surgery, to take it out. And then if we do that, we potentially cure you, okay? adjuvant therapy is, is something to add on to that surgery to cure you even more, to improve your chances of cure even more, okay? So this doesn't apply to the person whose kidney cancer is spread to the lungs or the liver already. It applies only to the person where the kidney cancer is still in the kidney. And so what it is, uh, right now, we don't have any standard therapy for people with localized disease. And in fact, any adjuvant therapy that people talk to you about is completely investigational. And so what we're doing is we're trying to take high-risk groups of people, uh, people with kidney cancer just in their kidneys, and they have certain features. It's a very high-grade cancer, or it's a very advanced cancer inside the kidney. And so if you had a recent nephrectomy, if we took out your kidney not too long ago, i.e. a month ago, you might be eligible or one of your friends might be eligible with, for this trial. It's called the PROTECT clinical trial. And what it does is it takes people with high-risk localized kidney cancer, not metastatic anywhere else, and it uh, assigns treatment to them. Half of the people get pizopinib, which is one of the tyrosine kinase inhibitors that Dr. Ruther talked about, and half of the people get placebo. The reason why there is a placebo is currently the standard of care is to do nothing. Okay? And I think a lot of people uh, in this room were already involved in one of the older trials um, that, looked at, uh, that looked at a similar question to this. And the reason why we need a placebo is because we need to be able to compare uh, patients that don't get this drug with patients that do get this drug and five years from now see which arm did better to see whether or not pizopinib actually helped. So um, if you or, one of, or someone that uh, you're helping through kidney cancer recently took their kidney out uh, for localized, uh, localized non-metastatic uh, kidney cancer, uh, this would be a trial that they could be potentially eligible for. So now I'm going to move on to clinical trials for non-localized disease for metastatic disease, so disease that is actually spread from the kidney to the lungs or the liver or the bone or somewhere else. And so the goal of these trials isn't to cure you, uh, the goal isn't to take away all of the disease, but the goal is to improve disease control, okay? So uh, these, these, are for tri these are trials that improve disease control. So one of the trials that we have ongoing now is called the RECORD-3 trial. 
And what it is, is it's for patients that who haven't started any treatment for their metastatic disease yet. So we just learned that they had metastatic kidney cancer and we haven't tried any treatments yet. And so what it does is it assigns two different treatment strategies. One is to start off with sunitinib, which is a pill that we standardly use for kidney cancer, FDA and Health Canada approved. And when that stops working, uh, we switch you to everolimus. Okay. And the other half of the patients do the opposite sequence. They start off with everolimus first, and then they go on to sunitinib when the everolimus stops working. Both of these drugs are FDA approved, Health Canada approved. We use them in the clinic all the time, so this wouldn't be the first time we're using these drugs. But what it investigates is the sequence, the correct sequence of which drug to use first. Because, as many of you know, right now, even though it's very exciting that we have these new drugs available, we don't know exactly who should get these drugs, what sequence to use them in. And so everyone gets about the same treatment. Everyone usually starts with a drug called sunitinib. But now we're investigating whether or not we should be reversing that sequence. And that's what this clinical trial is looking at. We're also doing some um, correlative studies for people taking sunitinib. So a lot of people in this room are probably taking sunitinib. And uh, what this does is it looks to see whether or not we can predict who are going to get side effects from the sunitinib. Who are, who's going to get uh, protein in your urine? Who's going to get uh, high blood pressure because of the sunitinib? And so what this study does is if you haven't started sunitinib yet, um, they take blood work from you. And uh, with every cycle of sunitinib you get, they take this blood work to see whether or not things in the blood change, uh, to see whether or not it can predict whether or not you're going to get side effects or not. So this study isn't something that will help the patient necessarily, but it will certainly help patients in the future to see whether or not we can predict who's going to get side effects or not. So. That's for patients who haven't started treatment yet. What about patients who, more, more mature patients, more advanced patients who've already had sunitinib or who've already had their first doses of drugs um, and then they're starting to not work anymore? What sort of new drugs are available out there? So the next two trials I'm going to talk about are new drugs that aren't FDA approved. They're completely investigational now and they're sort of hot in, in the world of RCC. So this is a, a BMS trial uh, for patients who've had one or more uh, targeted therapies. So if you already had the sunitinib already, or if you already had everolimus already, um, then you'd be eligible for this clinical trial. And what it is, no one gets a placebo in this clinical trial, but um, a third of the patients uh, get one dose of the BMS 936558, another third gets another dose, and another third gets another dose. And what it's looking at is to see whether or not this drug can actually improve outcomes, even if you've already used sunitinib, even if you've already used everolimus. Those are the standard drugs that we normally use. What is this BMS 936558? What it is, it's something that inhibits something called PD-1. And it's called Program Death-1. It sounds very Star Wars and Star Trek type. Um, but what it is, is our immune system actually is, uh, the normal function of our immune system is supposed to look out for bad things in our body, like cancer. And it's supposed to find the cancer and attack that cancer so that it can't spread. Okay. So the same is true for the common cold, the immune system is supposed to look for those viruses out there that don't belong to the body and attack them and kill them. So what PD-1 does actually is it actually, it actually tricks the immune system into thinking that the cancer is okay, that the cancer is actually a part of your body. And what this PD-1 inhibitor does is it prevents that from happening. It prevents that tricking of the immune system. So the immune system is able to activate again and attack the kidney cancer cells. So this is one of the very exciting new drugs out there, uh, one of the future things for kidney cancer. It's sort of a third generation immunotherapy uh, uh, type uh, molecule and we're all very excited to get this going. Um, so that's the BMS trial. There's another clinical trial called TKI-258, Devotinib, and what it is, it's another tyrosine kinase inhibitor that Dr. Ruther talked about. It's a pill that you take once a day, and basically it's for patients who've already had sunitinib and it didn't work anymore, or already had everolimus, it didn't work anymore. So what next? What could we use next? Because we have nothing else available for those patients in our armament armamentarium here. 
And so this is another uh, a p a pill that we could potentially use for, uh, for kidney cancer patients. And if you sign up for this trial, then half of the patients get the TKI-258 pills and half of the patients get serafinib pills, uh, which are uh, um, uh, a, a, a potential standard of care after the first two drugs have stopped working. So there are a lot more other clinical trials that are open, and I, I can't uh, talk all about all of them, um, but there's certainly a whole bunch of research happening in Canada, happening around the world. Um, there are other clinical trials looking at mTOR inhibitors, uh, new mTOR inhibitors, and there are other clinical trials looking at combinations of drugs, so adding, in addition to uh, serafinib, for example, adding another drug to see whether or not we can improve outcomes for patients. So those are all the clinical trials that, uh, are, you know, sort of a breezer of all the clinical trials uh, that are available today. So those are clinical trials, active treatment trials, where you get assigned drugs and where you're actually doing things uh, and get trying out new things. But what about other things that are a little bit easier for people to do, um, such as databases? So it'd be interesting to find out whether or not the drugs that we have today actually improve how patients do. Do they improve patient survival? It'd be interesting to find out what certain factors about a patient can actually predict if they'll do well on one drug or do well on another drug, and which drug should we choose? And, uh, and I think that's the, way we're, the wave of the future, where we're going, something called patient-tailored care. Because right now, everyone's getting the same drug in the beginning. Everyone's getting the same second drug in the, you know, when the first drug doesn't work. But what about, you know, can we find something in someone's blood, for example, to see whether or not we should be using drug A instead of drug B because we know drug A will work better? We're not there yet, and that's what this research here is trying to do. So I'm very fortunate to be the international chair of the International MRCC Database Consortium. And what this is, it's a collaboration amongst a whole bunch of institutions around the world, from Korea, Denmark, MD Anderson, Dana-Farber, Cleveland Clinic, and here in Calgary, um, to collect patients' data. Okay, So everyone treated with these VEGF inhibitors, with these mTOR inhibitors, we collect their data and put it into a computer and look for trends to see how we're doing, look for trends to see whether or not you know, people with characteristic A do better on drug A, and maybe people with characteristic B do better on drug B, okay? So those are the sort of things that we're looking at, and we're very fortunate to run that out of here in Calgary. We've, we've published a lot of things through this global RCC consortium. So, uh, you know, we've shown that you know, the sunitinib, which is one of the tyrosine kinase inhibitors uh, that we were talking about earlier, have doubled how, uh, doubled how long people live um, ever since we introduced it. And so now people in the era of targeted therapy live twice as long as they would have five years ago when we didn't have targeted therapy. We also found prognostic factors through this database consortium to, you know, to better predict how long people are going to live if you have certain clinical factors. And we also found that by even in patients with metastatic disease, where if it spreads somewhere else, um, taking out the original tumor in the kidney might make patients live longer, but only in a select subgroup of patients. And so that sort of uh, individualizes patients' care even more. So that's the International Kidney Cancer um, uh, Database Consortium, but what's happening in Canada? And so there's something really exciting happening in Canada, and what it is, it's called the kidney, Canadian Kidney Cancer Information System. And what it does is it aims to try to collect patients' data from all across Canada and to answer questions like, you know, which drugs are better? How have we improved outcome? Should we be taking out kidneys uh, in patients with metastatic disease? It's a Canada-wide initiative. Right now, we're just starting. We're one of the fledgling sites that are starting to collect patients' data. And then our hope is, in the next year or so, everyone in Canada will be a part of this with kidney cancer. Why is this important to do? Well, it's nice to know what's happening in other parts of the world, but it's also important to know what's happening here in Canada. So it's important to know how are patients in Canada doing with these targeted therapies? How are patients in Canada being treated with kidney cancer, and are we doing the right thing? So this CKSIS, as we call it, uh, has infrastructure to be able to collect patients' data. 
there's a consent form that goes with this. So um, it's being activated here in, Can in Calgary. So if you have an oncologist or a surgeon that treats your kidney cancer, ask them about this to see whether or not they could take part of this kidney cancer database um, uh, so that we can collect patient information and put it all in a Canadian database to see how people are doing. People, patients that um, uh, participate in the study will never be contacted, you know, you'll never be asked to do things or sign up for things or anything like that, but it just allows us to actually collect your information and we can report it as an aggregate whole to see how patients in Canada are doing. Certain things that we collect in, in this database are just da dem demographics, uh, lab parameters, surgical parameters, you know, whether or not there's metastatic disease, prognostic factors, different things to try to predict whether or not you can do well on a certain drug or not, and outcomes. And so it's a very general thing that we collect um, of patients that sign up for this database. So I've talked to you about clinical trials. I've talked to you about databases to try to collect patient data to see whether or not we're doing the right thing. Uh, with all of these things, what are the changes do we, that we hope for in the future? Well, right now, we have the present, and right now, this is our state. Everyone gets the same drug in the beginning, or similar drugs. Uh, everyone gets one or two drugs, okay? Uh, and people that do get these drugs, they live twice as long than as compared to people who got those drugs, um, who got immunotherapy five years ago, okay? So we're making inroads, we're making progress. People live twice as long as they used to five years ago. But what can we hope for in the future? And the future is something that will be built by these clinical trials and database uh, questions. In the future, I hope that everyone will get the drug that's best suited for them. So not a blanket thing where everyone gets the same drug. But in the future, I hope that we'll be able to predict that you should get this drug or no, maybe you should get this drug. In the future, I hope that everyone gets access to all of the drugs, and that's what Deb Maskins and everyone at the KCC is working so hard to do, so, so that everyone can get access to these drugs. But that's what I hope for in the future. In the future, I hope that patients, instead of living twice as long as they would have five years ago, would live ten times as long uh, as they did uh, five years ago. That's what I hope for in the future. And with more and more of these new drugs coming out, with more and more patients participating on clinical trials to help find these new drugs, I hope that will happen. In the end, we all hope for a cure. There's a lot of work to get there, okay? And right now, we can't offer a cure. Uh, but one day, I hope that we can. So research is very important. We can't do that without your help here. Please ask your oncologist or your urologist if there is a clinical trial that you could enroll in. Uh, and please help support our research efforts and fundraising through the KCC, which is a grassroots organization that have brought all of you together in this room. And uh, other uh, foundations like the Alberta Cancer Foundation, uh, uh, please, uh, please help us to be able to do research. So we can't do this without you, so please sign up now for something.